on channel and find the instantaneous velocity at any time t, and when t, t equals 2. So I'm going to take the derivative of that. And that's going to give me the velocity function. So it's going to be negative 3t squared plus 14t minus 14. So that's the first part, at any time t. Then I have to evaluate that at 2. So the velocity at t equals 2 is going to equal 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. <coughs> take the 2 and plug it in there, plus 28 minus 14. So 28 minus 14 is 14. 14 minus 12, so the velocity at 2 seconds is going to equal 2. And I supplied the answers with this, so there's my answer. Notice they brought that over for 14, and I forgot to put my units. So the units is, because it's velocity, meters per second. <coughs> part B, that was part A. Part B, find the acceleration. So I'm going to take the derivative of the velocity function. So for part B, I take the derivative, that's going to give me the acceleration function. So that would equal negative 6t plus 14. And that's at any time t. Now I'm going to find it, the acceleration when t equals 2. I take that 2 and I plug it in, so it's going to give me negative 12 plus 14. And that's going to give me 2 again. So the acceleration after 2 seconds equals 2, but I'm going to remember the units, meters per second squared. Let's see if that lines up with our answer. And there it is. <clears throat> There's the acceleration equation in 2 meters per second squared. Part C. When is the particle at rest? So that means I have to take the velocity and set it equal to 0. All right? And that will tell me when it's at rest. So for part C, I take the velocity and set it equal to 0. <clears throat> so when the velocity equals 0 is at negative 3t squared plus 14t minus 14. And I don't think I can factor that, so I'm going to use technology to solve that one. I'm going to use the solving capability on this Casio. I'm going to turn it on, hit the menu, and then scroll down to the function button. Equation function solver. I'm going to hit enter for that. This is a polynomial. So I'm going to type in 2, and then it's a second degree polynomial. So I'm going to select 2. And the leading coefficient is negative 3, then 14, and then negative 14. And the first intercept, when it's at 0, is 3.215. And the second time it's at rest is at 1.451. Let's see if that lines up. Part C, at rest, 1.451, because the velocity equals 0 there. <clears throat> the second part of the question wants to know when is it moving right and to the left. So, notice, the first equation is a negative t cubed. The velocity is a negative t squared. So a negative t squared on a graph is going to look like this. And it has an intercept at 1.415 and at 3.215. So, when the velocity is below the x-axis, it is moving to the left. When it is above the x-axis, it is moving to the right. So let's see, for part C, the second part, I have where it's at rest. It's at rest there and there. Now, it's moving right from 1.451 up until 3.215. It's going to be on the interval, 1.451, comma, to 3.215. And now let's know when it is moving to the left. And it's moving to the left from zero because this whole problem states that any time greater than or equal to zero. So it's going to be moving to the left from zero to 1.45. So I think I put a close bracket on that. Zero to 1.451, parenthesis, because it rests there. Union, and then it's moving to the left again from 3.215 up until positive infinity. Part C was a long one. <clears throat> moving left, close bracket, open bracket, open bracket, because the velocity function is left in zero, moving right. And that's it. Part D, find the displacement of the particle during the first two seconds. Well, D, the displacement is going to be the integral from A to B of the velocity function, dt. So for the first two seconds, it's going to be from 0 to 2. And the velocity function was negative 3t squared plus 14t minus 14 dt. Again, I'm going to use technology to solve this. This is a calculator active problem. So I'm going to hit menu 1 to get into normal mode. Now I have to make sure I'm in radian mode. I'm actually in degree mode. I can see because it has a little D there. So I'm going to hit shift setup, 2, 2. Now I have a little R there, so I know I'm in radian mode. And I'm just going to enter this like it looks using the integral button. Pretty convenient, the integral button's on the top. Negative 3, I'm going to use X instead of T. T squared plus 14 T. Hit the X button again. Minus 14. From 0 to 2. And it'll give me a nice answer. Negative 8. And displacement is meters, so it's going to be negative 8 meters. <coughs> Part E, find the total distance traveled during the first two seconds. Well, distance... Distance... is going to be the integral from A to B of the absolute value of the velocity. So it's going to be the same problem, the same setup, but this time nested in an absolute value. I wonder if I'll get the same answer. <coughs> so I'm going to hit my integral button, but this time I'm going to find the absolute value. And the absolute value is down there by the parentheses, so I hit shift absolute value, 
negative 3 x squared plus 14 x minus 14 from 0 to 2. And that gives me 9.262 meters. Um, why is it not the same? Because of that graph. And that's what point at or question F asks. Are the answers to D and E the same? No. And here's the reason. Because displacement is this from 0 to 2 plus this. And notice there must have been more negative than positive to get me a negative 8. Now, from 0 to 2, for absolute value, it takes that negative area and makes it positive. So all the area is going to be considered positive under the curve, and you won't get a negative answer. So it added this zone to this zone to give me a double positive of that. On the other side, when it was just displacement, it added did this zone minus this zone, which gave me negative 8. Number 56. <clears throat> Position is given by that. So it asks from 0 to 3, find the particle's acceleration each time the velocity is zero. So I have to set the velocity equal to zero, find that value, and then plug it into the acceleration formula. So the position function is t squared minus sine t. The velocity function is the derivative of that, which is 2t minus cosine t. And I want to set that equal to zero. <clears throat> so let's see here. I don't think I can do that on the algebraically, so I'm going to use this, and I'm going to hit my solve button. I'm going to type in cosine t equals 2t solve. 0.45018. Pretty good, pretty good calculator. So it equals zero at t equals 0.45018. Now I'm going to take the acceleration and plug that value in. So the acceleration is the derivative of this. 2 minus, whoop, the derivative of negative cos, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that's going to change to positive. Sine of t, and now I want to find the acceleration at 0.45018. O one eight is going to equal two plus sine of point four five O one eight, and I'm in radian mode, so I should be okay. Two plus sine of point four five O one eight, and that's going to equal two point four three, and it's an acceleration. Two point four three five meters per second squared. Number 57, I'm given the velocity, and it says find the velocity of the particle each time the acceleration is zero. So that means I have to find the acceleration or take the derivative of the velocity. So using the chain rule, that's going to give me 2t for the guts times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of t squared plus 1. And I have to set the acceleration equal to zero. That's what the question asks. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. And in order to solve that, I can't really do it algebraically, so I'm going to use the tech. Um, I'm going to go to y equals, and I already have it plugged in, <coughs> the acceleration model. And I'm going to go to window, and since my x value starts at 0 and ends at 2, I'm going to make my x min negative 1 and my x max 3. It really doesn't matter about my y min and y max, and then I'm going to graph it, and there it is. So now what I'd like to do is just go ahead and find out where it crosses the x-axis. So in order to do that, I'm going to hit second calc, I'm going to hit second calc, and I'm going to look for a 0, which is number 2. And I'm going to go to left bound, so I'm going to scroll over. And find out where that is. Now I'm going to go to the right bound and I'm going to scroll back over to the right of where it's a little bit below. Hit enter again. Enter. And there's my zero. At 0 0.813551 one, two. <clears throat> I also notice it crosses at this location right before it hits two. So I'm going to hit second, calc, zero. And I'm going to get the left bound at this spot. So I'm going to scroll over using my mouse key. I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm going to scroll a little bit past that. I'm going to hit enter twice. I don't want to guess. I hate when it asks me to guess. I'm going to hit enter again. And that zero is at 1.6853437. So another zero is located at, I want to write it down correctly, 1.6853437. Now I'd like to evaluate the velocity at these two x values. So I'm going to actually plug these in to that. There's another way to do it. I can also use my graphing utility to evaluate a number. So I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to clear that out and put in the velocity function. And the velocity function in this case is cosine x squared, close parentheses, plus x. And I'm going to see what my window is again. Notice it's still from negative 1 to 3. Um, I don't know what my y min and y max should be, so I'm going to graph it and see if it fits. Look at that, it does. Now, the key to doing this is I want to evaluate that graph at my 0.8135. So I'm going to hit second, calc, and I'm going to find the value. And the value x value that I'm going to plug in is 